In this video, we're going to talk about solving homogeneous linear differential equations with constant coefficients. That's a lot to say. So homogeneous, that means that the right-hand side is zero. So homogeneous linear DEs. And we're interested in the case where the coefficients are constant. So with constant coefficients. These are pretty easy to solve, uh, but let's try to at least come up with some of the formulas involved in the process. So let's pretend for a moment that uh, nobody knows how to solve these, right? No one knows. And let's just focus on trying to solve one that's order two. So a times the second derivative plus b times the first derivative plus c times y equals zero. So this is a DE of order two because the order of the highest derivative is 2. It's linear, and it's homogeneous because the right-hand side is 0. So again, let's pretend you know we don't know how to do it. So how, how would we figure this out? Well, we need to come up with a function that when we multiply the second derivative times a number plus the first derivative times a number plus the zeroth derivative, or the original function times a number, somehow that magically all has to be equal to 0, right? That, that how is that going to happen? So the natural choice is to think about an exponential function. And the reason is the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So maybe if it was like e to some power of x, this could magically happen and you can add them up and you would get 0. So the natural thing to do is start by letting y be equal to e to the mx. Then you differentiate. So when we take the derivative we use the chain rule. So it's e to the mx times the derivative of mx, which is m. So it'd be m e to the mx. Then if you do it again, you get another m. So you would get m squared e to the mx. Okay. So then you would, you would plug it into your DE. Again, if you didn't know how to do this, you'd say, hey, maybe this is a solution, right? So it'd be a m squared e to the mx plus b m e to the mx, right, plugging in the derivative, plus c e to the mx equals 0, right, just plugging in the first, second derivative and the function as well. So you say, okay, you want this to be a solution, so what can you do next? Well, you could pull out e to the mx, you could factor that out, so you'd get am squared plus bm plus c, and that's equal to 0. E to the mx is never 0, so you could easily divide both sides by e to the mx, and there's no issues at all. Boom. Boom. So that leaves you with a quadratic equation in m. So we have am squared plus bm plus c equals 0. Using the quadratic formula, this gives us m equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, all over 2a. So now we can investigate the three different types of solutions that we would get from a quadratic equation. So there are three cases. One, the first case would be if you get distinct real roots. So if this number here, the discriminant, is positive. So like 2 and 3, 4 and 5, so you could get distinct real roots. So distinct real roots. Say m1 and m2. So if you get distinct real roots, m1 and m2, you would get two different answers, e to the m1x, e to the m2x. These answers would be linearly independent because the m's are different. And you have two solutions to a DE of order two. They're linearly independent. Therefore, a linear, linear combination of those solutions is the general solution. So this would be e to the m1x plus c2 e to the m2x. So if you get different answers, that's the answer. Two, so distinct real roots, that would be your solution to your DE. Two, say instead you had a repeated real root. Repeated real root. So that would mean something like m minus 4 quantity squared equals 0, right? So you would get m equals 4, 
and the multiplicity is this number here, so multiplicity is 2, so the 4 appears twice. In this case, the solution would be c1 e to the mx plus c2 x e to the mx. This is assuming our repeated real root is m, and so how would you get this one? Well, there's a formula, there's a way to come up with it, but you could check. Whenever you have a repeated real root, m, if e to the mx is a solution, you could check that x times e to the mx is also a solution. These are both linearly independent, therefore a linear combination of these would form the general solution. Three, the last case uh, you, you could get is if you had complex conjugate roots. So complex conjugate roots. So if you had complex conjugates, uh, say alpha plus or minus beta i, uh, the general solution in this case would actually be c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. You may say, how do you get cosines and sines from this? Ah, Euler's formula, right? There's a formula that connects e and sine and cosine. You would use e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now, it's not immediate. It takes some trickery to do this, so I won't go through all of it. But that, that's the main idea. You would use this formula to get rid of the e's and come up with this. So these are the three different cases that you could get. So if you had distinct real roots, that's what you get. If you have a repeated real root, that's what you get. And if you have complex conjugates, that's what you get. Okay. So how do you solve one of these? Well, let me give you the steps. So steps. So the first step in solving one of these DEs is you find what's called the auxiliary equation. That's the equation that we just solved up above. So find the auxiliary equation. It's also called the characteristic equation. So for example, like let's say you had y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals 0. Basically, for each, the order of the derivative will tell you the power. So this is order 2, so it's m squared. This is order 1, so it's just m to the 1. And this is just the number 1. Right, because it's m to the 0, because it's the 0th derivative. So that would be your auxiliary equation. Step 2. Step 2 would be to solve it. So solve it. And then your answers would be like the answers above. So answers are as above. So what does that mean? Let me go back up and show you. So if you had distinct real roots, that would be your answer. If you had a repeated real root, that would be your answer. And if you had complex conjugates, that would be your answer. Let's go ahead and do a couple of really, really simple examples, and that'll be it. Say we had y double prime plus 3y prime plus, uh, let's see, 2 equals 0. So in this case, um, this is the second derivative. So this would be m squared plus 3m, oops, I forgot the y there, plus 2, right? you got to have the y there, right? There's got to be a y there, equals 0. This should factor m plus 1, m plus 2, equals 0. So you get two answers. You get m equals negative 1, m equals negative 2. We have distinct real roots, so the answer would be y equals c1 e to the m 1x, so this is our m1, so negative x, plus c2, and then e to the other one, so negative 2x. So that would be the case of distinct real roots. Let's do another one. How about this one? y double prime plus 6y prime plus 9y equals 0. So in this case, the characteristic or auxiliary equation would be m squared plus 6m, plus 9 equals 0. This factors, this is m plus 3, quantity squared, equals 0. So m is negative 3, and the multiplicity is 2. So the answer would be c1 e to the negative 3x, plus, and it's repeated twice, so you have to put an x there. 
if it was repeated three times, you'd have to have an x squared. You'd have to go further. Okay, negative 3x. So that's the case of the repeated real root. And then one more. Say we had uh, y double prime plus 4y equals 0. In this case, the characteristic or auxiliary equation would be m squared plus 4 equals 0. You would solve this. You would get m squared equals negative 4. Take the square root, so you get m equals plus or minus 2i. So you'd think of this as 0 plus or minus 2i. So alpha plus or minus beta i. So alpha would be 0, and beta would be 2. And so the formula was c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. Then you just plug everything in. e to the 0 is 1, so you just get c1 cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x. I rushed through those last three examples just to, for completeness, just so you have them in the same video. But in the videos that follow, there's a ton of examples of, of these, of solving these. So I hope that made sense.